Hello and welcome to the Bowtie Gardens. We're on a uh, Florida end of December day. It is beautiful out here. The skies are blue, the sun is shining. It's around 70 degrees out here and we are looking at the raised bed gardens now and there's some interesting news coming up here in a little bit. Uh, also, uh, if, you, if you saw the um, video on filling raised beds, uh, you can see I haven't done anything. That was just a couple of days ago that I recorded that video. And uh, so I got to get another, about another yard to finish down there. And I need to get one more yard on top of here, though it may be sand. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. We're still, still trying to get our plans together. But really, garden bed one, there is nothing but compost in here. Uh, I will eventually be covering it with cardboard. I have a bunch of cardboard in store back over here that I got from Lowe's, my friend at Lowe's in the shipping department. And I will be putting it over here like I did in bed number two. So uh, really not much to see in bed number one. Now these beds uh, are, have been dug down two and a half to three feet deep. And uh, when, when we bought this house a little over 14 months ago, we, there comes a helicopter. Again, I'm between uh, four bases, four air bases, two airports and a heliport. So we get a lot of air traffic around here. But where was I? Okay, so yeah, when we bought this property, right here was an in, an in garden, an in ground bed, uh, garden bed, pretty big. Most of the area that you see that we have our raised beds in was all a garden, and the fellow, the previous owner, had for years been putting uh, chicken manure on this ground. And so when we got here, you reach down and grab a handful of the sand, and it was dark, dark sand. It's beautiful, just rich. And so um, that chicken manure uh, did him pretty good. And I'm not using chicken manure because I have access to free horse bedding compost. And it's a little different. I have to learn how to use it. We had, we've been growing in it a year now. Uh, right now I've got, well, okay. So anyway, we dug all that dark sand out that the previous owner had put the chicken feed in, chicken manure in. We dug down about as much as a foot and pulled that sand out. <coughs> Ooh. Yeah. So after doing that, we got almost a hundred Christmas trees cause it was Christmas time. And we put uh, chopped up Christmas trees in the bottom in that hole we dug. Then we buried it over with the rich sand. Then we put on 130 bags of yard waste leaves and sticks and so forth. And then we put 14 to 16 inches of this same compost. Now, the stuff we got a year ago, or a little under a year ago, was a lot more compost than this stuff we got now. It was black, it was beautiful, it was rich, oh, just delicious soil. And uh, what we've got now is, has a lot more wood chip in it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling assured that you can still use it. One of the reasons we're setting this up so early is so that this can do some more composting on its own and get some, get some more. Uh, I know I have a lot of worms in here and they're already at work in here. I could easily dig up, dig through here and find a, a few worms pretty quickly. So lots going on. There's biome growing in here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting ready for a new year of growing and it's, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I, I do know because of all the wood chip, we're probably gonna have to do a little more supplementing of the soil that we hadn't done before. And that's just gonna come along with learning. And that's what, what I'm doing. So I, this is, we're entering my fourth successful year of gardening here in, in a month or two. And yeah, so <laughs> it's ready to go. But uh, yeah, so that's garden bed number one and how it's built. All these beds are built the same way. And uh, let's go on to bed number two and see what's going on there. Cause there are a few things going on in there. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So leaving the end of bed number one, 
We've got a bag with a turmeric growing in it. There's a hanging basket here that had zinnias in it. Big ones, of course the peach tree growing there. But uh, I don't know how this turmeric is gonna look after the freeze and I can see it now. It actually had opened a leaf and has appeared to have failed. We'll have to see if that comes back. I think it will. It wasn't a very long freeze. So hopefully that turmeric has enough roots down there and still enough energy to start that again. We'll have to see. Never grown turmeric before. But bed number two, looky here. The uh, Brussels sprouts are still growing and they seem to have survived the, uh, the freeze quite well, though they are not producing any Brussels sprouts. And this, I believe, is because of a lack of nitrogen. And this, the wood chips in here have a tendency to steal nitrogen from the soil as they get processed. And I think they're stealing too much nitrogen that these things cannot produce their fruit. And so I'm going to come back in here and spread a little blood meal in here, see if we can get something producing here if it doesn't get freezing again. I don't know how these, these are going to do. Now, Brussels sprouts, okay. These Brussels sprouts were planted February 25th of 2022. Here we are at the end of December. They still, they actually stayed very small all summer through the heat. I should have planted them a lot earlier. I knew I should, but I wanted to see what we got. Well, they kind of stayed small all through the summer. And I mean small, just little tiny things, just four, six leaves on them. Go back and look at a couple of the video tours from June or July. I show these things in them. But they stay small forever. And then when this, the weather started cooling down, look at what they started to do. They are just growing up everywhere. So looking good. Of course, the rest of bed number two, we have all covered with the uh, cardboard. This is the one I filled uh, a few weeks ago. It was covered last time we did a video tour for November. This here is a Tabasco plant. In fact, I need to come through here. I, I, was, uh, I did a video on removing dead leaves from a frozen pepper plant, and I forgot about this guy over here. So I don't know how much of it's gonna survive, Ooh, it actually feels really good. It feels very sturdy. I've seen these things come back from worse. This was an 18 degree Fahrenheit freeze, which was pretty intense. But I am anxious to see if they can come back from that. So we will have to see. I will get in here and in fact, there's a Tabasco right there. Oh my goodness, before the freeze, I actually ate a Tabasco. No, it was right after the freeze. There was the Tabasco peppers looked a little green still. I ate one and it lit me up. Oh my goodness. A little tiny thing about that big lit me up. So, been a good plant. This Tabasco plant's been good. It was started, it came as a, uh, as a seedling from, I believe, Ace Hardware. It's a Bonnie plant. This uh, kale, oh, this stuff is so good. You get these new leaves on this dino kale and this fleshy part, you don't eat the stem. The stem's a little sticky, stickish, like a stick. Okay, I'll get the right word. English is hard, mouth not working. But um, yeah, mm. since the freeze, that stuff is good. Mm. Tastes so good. This is the mint plant. If you watch the part two outer beds, this is the uh, chocolate mint plant that uh, I just moved over here to get out of the way of the tree removal. Speaking of tree removal, we've got all our irrigation sitting here, but the tree of course is right here. I'm going to have to remove this cross piece, that cross piece, and the next cross piece, plus these diagonals and that post all need to come out because I want to be sure that the tree crew has all the room they need to remove this tree. So the cafe lights have to be pulled back. All the, the bamboo from the top has to be pulled back. Some of it's wired up. I'm gonna to have to undo the wire. And there's a irrigation line going up there from, for something. I don't know what that's going to. But uh, yeah, so gonna to have to do some work here in the next day or two. Hard work. There's even a cattle panel going up over that. I'm 
probably gonna have, there's one post right there in the end of bed too by the Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna have to pull that out. I don't want any dangers over here. So we'll have to take that uh, arch trellis made out of a cattle panel out of the way as well. The aloe looks terrible, absolutely terrible except for the center of almost every single plant has little green shoots coming out. Look underneath there, little green shoots. No, nothing's dead here, it just had a cold. I will take the opportunity to reorganize this just a little bit more. I really want to ultimately end up with a path along the side of bed number three on the two sides there, a nice clear walking path. So I will probably end up doing a little grooming back there, maybe replanting. Well, that of course brings us to, oh my goodness, the peppers. And if you did not see the pepper video that I just did, there's one video that's the reveal after the freeze. And all the leaves in here were slimy and dead. It was terrible, terrible. And so, in one of the last, in fact, it's the last video where I talked about this um, and pulled all the leaves off of these things, cleaned it up. Basically, this looks like a winterized pepper bed. So what happens when, when you winterize peppers, you take off all the leaves, you cut it down, and you hope for new growth. You hope it survives. Now, this, this soil that's under here is irrigated. You can see there's an irrigation line right there. So it actually got water just this morning and I can feel down here, I can go just an inch and it's moist, 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 moist. In fact, all the way over here, it's a few inches there to one irrigation, a few inches here to another irrigation. It's wet all throughout, it's very saturated, not saturated, but very moist, just what they want. So with this warm weather we're getting, hopefully these peppers will do good. Now the peppers down here on this end, if you follow along, you know that down here we have newly planted. These haven't been in here very long. If these survive, like that one right there, if these survive, I will be surprised. Very happily surprised, but I'll be surprised. I don't know that they're going to survive very well. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, the further over, further in we get here, the, the older the plant, and like these plants right here have been in for a few months, and they have good root systems. They've actually started producing peppers, which is exciting because we had Perry Perry and we had Scotch Bonnet in here. We've had jalapeno up in here, uh, bell peppers. Go back and look at that video with the where I cleaned up the leaves and see, and watch all the way to the end where I show what we harvested from here. It wasn't a bunch, but it was impressive. Oh my! I even eat a Scotch Bonnet at the beginning of that video. So, again, stupid things. At the other end of this low tunnel are the more established pepper plants, and these actually looked really good. They look and feel great. This is a Chinese giant bell pepper, and this is just stiff, ready to go. And we are waiting to see what grows new leaves. That's the, we're waiting now. And I talk about patience in that last video, and it's one of the things that gardening will teach you is patience and uh, how to wait and see what happens. So what we're doing is we're, I'm watching. I imagine it's gonna take two weeks before we see anything, maybe a month, but keep an eye out for the next video tour of the raised beds for the end of January and see what happens here. Cause I am sitting on the edge of my seat with anticipation to see where this thing goes. A lot of pepper plants in here. So right next to the pepper plants, of course, some of you may know, we have garlic. And of course we have um, elephant garlic planted here. And in the next two rows, what's this? Now I just a few days ago released another video looking at the music garlic and the music was not up. Just two days ago, folks, two days, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them have popped up in two days. That is music hardneck garlic. 
And then next to it, now these are the ones that I knew were coming up, but we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 I can see right now, and I wonder if there's one buried right here. There should be one right in here somewhere, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not going to push it. Okay, should be one right in here somewhere. Oh, I just wanna see it though. I'm like a little kid, aren't I? Okay, stop. So yeah, that's the Enchilium red, and then the Chesnuck red. Check this out, even the Chesnuck red is coming up. Little shoots on that also. So we already have a lot more garlic than just two or three days ago. Folks, this came up in just a couple of days. This whole row here, all these came up in just a couple of days. They were ready to be seen. And then these one, these smaller ones over here just came up since then too. And I, I, I know a few of these just came up as well. There weren't that many there of the Enchilium red. So yeah, this is, this is very, very exciting to see. Oh my goodness, this is very exciting because we're gonna have garlic this year. I will put out a video if I start seeing any in the grow bags. But now the grow bags also have a couple of inches of shredded leaf mulch. I am interested to see if the elephant garlic makes it. And I believe it will, but it's bigger. It'll take a little longer to show itself. So beyond that, we have what's going to start out to be being the tomato bed in the spring. It's got compost in there. Actually, I don't think I put anything under the cardboard, but it does have a lot of compost and some chop and drop corn stalks. I'm gonna have a couple of tomato plants here and then, of course, we have the beans. And these are Blue Lake stringless pole beans. And you can see there's tons of pods here. Just beautiful looking. Now, these are a little slimy. I'm afraid some of these may have, ooh, yeah, those don't feel right. They feel squishy in there. I don't think those are going to be good. I might harvest some anyway just to see, but I'm not very optimistic. Well, that one's a little crispy. These feel, I mean, soft. The, the bean inside feels soft. Fortunately, I harvested a bunch of these pods. And we'll go inside here in just a few minutes and uh, uh, do some shelling of seed beans. These are for string beans. And it's a stringless, or green beans, I should say. Green beans, it's a stringless variety. And they were our best bean this past year with no strings all the other ones we had 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 heavy heavy strings and this one did not so anyway the other goji plant is looking good gonna go in here there's there's been some new growth in fact check this out this is a totally new goji plant goji berry plant growing right here totally new i actually stuck um some of these of twigs that are coming out of the other goji berry, stuck them in the ground here and they are starting to take off. So that's exciting to see. We can propagate these and make new ones. Goji berries, of course, are supposed to be very healthy. Little, uh, they look like tiny red peppers, but they have the uh, taste and consistency of a tomato. So the yarrow up here is looking good. This is a, benef is, is a beneficial insect attractor. So I've only got four this year because I was just trying them. I'm gonna try to seed out some more of those next year, see if we can get more of those going. They are perennial, which means they will come back year after year. They say they're very difficult to start, but once you get them going, they're very difficult to kill, which is what I want. Some plant like that that will keep attracting Beneficial insects, that's a good thing. It also makes a beautiful little flower. I showed in another video, this uh, little, it's a spent flower, of course, but you can see here, very pretty little flower. So yeah, it's getting water too. We had to empty our irrigation system for the freeze, of course, but 
goji berry is looking good. So there's a whole bunch of Blue Lake stringless pole beans from a harvest I did before the freeze. Uh, in fact, just before the freeze. So there's plenty here. Really, I only need between 64 and 128. I'm going to double plant these so that they will be sure to grow bean plants for us next year. And again, these are those stringless Blue Lake beans that we liked a lot. We'll end up preserving and doing some pressure canning on those. But uh, yeah, it's not very hard to can. And that last set of plant of, of those vines that you saw, those are the only ones growing at the time. So I know they weren't cross pollinated by anything. If, if that is possible with beans, I'm, I'm not even sure about that right now. But just pull them apart and get the beans out. So anyway, so that's the uh, December garden tours. This is the end of part three. Uh, this is really my own journal of everything that uh, goes on in the garden for my information. You'll notice in the description there's very good indexing of all the videos and that's why so that I can go back and find my comments on whatever I might need at any given time. And so this, this uh, gives me a very good format to go back and see what happened when, if, when, if and when I need to find out. So. Um, if you, uh, if you are just stumbling across our channel, be sure to hit the thumbs up. We've got the uh, tree removal video coming out pretty soon. And uh, in fact, it might even be happening when this video posts. So we'll have to see where the, t where the timing falls for that. But uh, um, yeah, if, if you're just stumbling along here, be sure to subscribe to Bowtie Life. And if you already have subscribed and are returning, thank you so much. That's one of the best things that uh, you can do to help. It's a free thing that you can do to help grow the channel. And also hit like and on this video, or that's the thumbs up. And that lets YouTube know that you found this entertaining, informational, educational, or maybe just plain stupid. Uh, but it, uh, it, it lets YouTube know that it got your attention and that helps to grow the channel too. Uh, another thing that you can do for free is to share the videos on your social media, whether it be on YouTube or, I mean, sorry, not you, but uh, Instagram or Facebook or, well, not Instagram, um, but any of the other social medias that you can share links to YouTube on, then uh, please feel free to do that. Let your friends know if you, if you think they might find it informational or entertaining or educational. Uh, so we'll be planting these beans out in the spring on some of our new beds and some of our old beds and hopefully be getting a nice big crop of these blue lakes uh, stringless beans next year so that being said thank you for following along and uh, hope you all are having a wonderful new year and as always have a blessed day